Hey, how are you doing? This is Craig back from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Welcome into today's video. And don't forget, new videos every day at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I always remember it has to be reversed. It's reversed for me. Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a new daily video. And every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live uh, with a live stream and AMA, Ask Me Anything live support. We all get together and support each other. So if you're struggling with your drinking or if you're trying to maintain your sobriety, Wednesdays, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's two o'clock in the United Kingdom, four o'clock where I am. Uh, we all get together every week. So be there. And if you want to make sure you don't miss it, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get a notification when I put out a new video or go live. So today's video, what is the story with this drug? Is it a depressant? Or is it a stimulant? Because, you know, when you started looking into quitting drinking, you will have heard the story many times that alcohol is a depressant and they have very doom and gloom. But then something won't quite ring true with that story because you'll think, hang on a minute, if alcohol is a depressant, how come people get crazy, have a good time, laugh, joke, dance, sing when they're drunk? Surely, if alcohol was a depressant, then everyone would be sitting around moping, feeling very down and very low. Yeah? Well, uh, let's talk about that. So what's the truth? Is alcohol a stimulant or a depressant? Well, the answer is both. But but the, uh, the balance is heavily skewed. It's not even. It's not 50-50. The balance is heavily skewed towards depressant. Now, the stimulant aspect is kind of overinflated as well because we make some incorrect assumptions. We assume when we look back on our life that all those times where we were having a good time, drinking alcohol, laughing, joking, dancing, having an amazing time, we assume that if you took the alcohol away, we still wouldn't be, we wouldn't be having a good time. We, we assume that we're having a good time because of the alcohol, where in reality, a lot of the times we are having a good time in spite of the alcohol. You know, it's difficult in the Western world because we live in this bubble of unreality around alcohol that you have to have alcohol to have a good time. You have to have alcohol at a party. Uh, you know, back when I was a drinker, if you'd said to me, if my wife had said to me, look, we're going to a party on Saturday night, I, my first thought would have been, okay, great. So if she'd said then there's no alcohol there, I would have been like a petulant child. I would have refused to go. I, and my, I wouldn't see any problem with that. I would have said that party's going to be crap. That would be the worst party. Well, that's going to be boring. I'm not going there. That's going to be the worst party. Pointing the finger of blame at the party, not at myself. Failing to appreciate that I was so far down the rabbit hole that I couldn't even contemplate having a good time without alcohol. So is it true? Is it true that you can't have a good time without alcohol? You know the answer to this because there's evidence everywhere. You know, there are cultures around the world where they don't consume alcohol. It's banned by their religion. And they have amazing times. They have amazing fiestas and parties. Look at the Hindu culture. Look at a Hindu wedding. No alcohol. Are you telling me that there's no dancing, no singing, no feasting, no celebrating, no laughing? No. It goes on for days. A joyous occasion. No alcohol. And you've been there. You've been to parties without alcohol and had the best time. And if alcohol had been introduced, it would have turned it from the best time to the worst time. Do you want to know when? When you were a kid. When you went to someone's birthday party at a soft play center or McDonald's or something like that, and you ran around like crazy, screaming and laughing and joking and just having the best time ever. Now, I'm going to argue if the, I introduced alcohol to that situation, I would turn it into a very, very different party and not a good one. There would be vomit everywhere. There would be kids crying. There would be <laughs> devastation. So... How can it be true? You're still the same person you were as a child. You're just bigger now. You're just matured. How can it be that now as an adult, you can't have a good time without taking a depressant drug? Doesn't make any sense. But then nothing about alcohol use does make sense. It's completely insane. You know? And, and the problem is when you're inside the bubble, you cannot see the insanity. It's only when you step outside. Let me give you a really good example. The language that we use to describe how we had a good time with alcohol. 
Did you hear about Dave at the party last night? My God, he was trashed. Did you hear about Susan? She was hammered. Did you hear about Nick? He was slaughtered last night. Hammered, trashed, slaughtered. Look them up in the dictionary. These, these are not good words. How can they mean something good happened? I was slaughtered last night. How can that possibly be good? Doesn't make any sense. It's insane. But how often have you stopped and thought about that as a drinker? How long have you walked up to the bar and the barman said to you, what's your poison? And you've stopped and gone, I don't want to drink poison. That seems like a really silly thing to do. Hardly ever, right? Or never. You've probably just said vodka or whiskey or whatever your drink is. You've ignored the evidence right before you. Someone has just said to you, you're about to drink poison. Is that okay with you? And you've gone, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Insanity, right? So with alcohol, first of all, there's this huge false assumption that without the alcohol, the party would have been crap. It would have been boring. That's wrong to start with. Secondly, there is a brief moment of time where the alcohol acts as a stimulant because as it gets into your head, it switches off your inhibitions. It switches off your ability to make sound and logical decisions. It switches off your ability to, um, to carry out a proper risk assessment. And you might think, well, Craig, I'm not so dull that I'm always walking around carrying out risk assessments. Well, you are actually. You know, you, you, you are, whether you're conscious of it or not, you're always asking yourself the question, is that pan on the stove hot? Is that car approaching me very quickly? How, how high is this building? Is that rail safe? Can I go close? You know, we're always doing risk assessments, but we're just not consciously doing risk assessments. So when you get alcohol in your head, you're now incapable of doing a, an effective risk assessment on life. What does that feel like? Well, initially that feels like freedom. That feels like, oh, I can relax for once. I don't have to worry about where all the dangers in the room. I don't have to worry. About... Well, you do have to worry. It's just, you're not worrying. And that feels like a sense of release, a sense of freedom, like, oh, I can relax because I don't need to worry about anything. But of course, that's nonsense. You're now just at more risk. And also, you know, this drug, it's switching off your, um, your inhibitions um, because it, don't, it doesn't want you to question what happens next. The drug wants you to carry on drinking. And, and no matter how you look at that activity, it doesn't make sense. It's insane. First of all, let's take the drug out of this. Why would you ever be so thirsty that you need to drink 10 pints of liquid to quench your thirst? That's, that's crazy, isn't it? I live in Cyprus. It gets extremely hot here. Like, you know, I don't know, 45 degrees, 120 degrees in the summer. Even if I was out all day in the sun and I came home absolutely parched, dying of thirst, I could drink one pint of water or one pint of one pint of orange juice. Maybe I could do another second pint of orange juice if I was really thirsty. But under no circumstances would I stand there drinking 10 pints of orange juice. <laughs> I mean, if you saw me doing that, you'd be like, quick, get an ambulance. There's something very wrong with Craig. But yet we go out on a night and we'll drink two bottles of wine or... 10 pints of lager, 10 pints of beer. So on just from the fluid point of view, that's insane. So look what the drug has managed to get you to do. It's managed to get you to do something insane, to drink vast quantities of liquid for no reason. And then on the, on the drug side of things, you know, the, the, you only get one decision, and that is the first drink. That's why it messes with your brain, because it doesn't want you to be aware that you're continuing to drink poison, which doesn't make any sense. It's got a mild anesthetic in it, so it's dumbing the pain. You're not feeling that hangover feeling that you get the morning after. You should, by all rights, feel that within 20 minutes of drinking, because you've been poisoned. The hangover is, is what it feels like to be poisoned. Now, do you think anyone would have a drinking problem if you got that hangover feeling 20 minutes after you started drinking? Of course not. That's why this drug is so devious. It has an anesthetic in it so that you're unaware that you're poisoning yourself. How evil is that? So that kind of euphoria, that stimulation lasts very briefly. If you're, if you're having fun after that point, you've got, to, you've got to ask the question, would I have had fun anyway? 
often a lot of times problem drinkers can't have fun if they can't get access to alcohol. That's the only reason. And then the, the more you continue to drink, the more the depressive agent of the drug starts to work its effect on your central nervous system. And you will have seen this happening. You will have seen very happy, joyous parties descend into people crying, people arguing, people fighting, people going quiet, people ghosting, you know, just disappearing. Many times I've been out with people who I had to console at the end of the evening because they just burst into tears. And you ask them what's wrong and they, they can't tell you what's wrong. They're just, they're just having this big depressive episode. So that's that's the first thing. Now, secondly, if you're drinking on your own, the depressive element is all the more clear. You know, you haven't got that atmosphere, the social connection, the friends, the laughing, the music and all the stuff that goes with a party. You're just drinking a depressive drug. And the chances are, if you are the sort of person who drinks at home, like I used to prefer to do, like most problem drinkers prefer to do, the chances are you're sitting on the sofa, eating junk food, watching TV, face emotionless, just consuming the drug, consuming the drug, consuming the drug, until you go into some sort of alcoholic coma and then you, you, know, you drag yourself to bed, wake up in the morning feeling terrible, repeat the process over again, uh, do that for 10, 20 years, and this is how you end up in that downward spiral. So let's not be under any illusion. The stimulant effects of alcohol are tiny. They're an accidental byproduct of what this drug is trying to do to you. The major aspect of alcohol is as a depressant. It depresses your central nervous system. The more you drink it, the more depressed you will become. There is no escaping it. That's the truth. Thank you for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, do me a huge favor and click the subscribe button. Uh, apparently, some, uh, YouTube tells me that 44% of the people that watch this channel aren't subscribed. They're just kind of coming in and out, and that seems crazy. So please uh, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get updates as well. And I will see you in the live stream tomorrow. Don't miss it. 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Before you leave, click that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get a notification when I next make a video. And if you're ready to take action on your drinking, go to stopdrinkingexpert.com. You'll find lots of free help and resources. And of course, the world's most successful and respected quit drinking program. Easy for me to say, but do your own research, and the story is the same no matter where you look. Proven Expert rates as five stars, excellent, from 1,566 verified reviews. Trustpilot says the same, five stars, from 1,450 verified reviews. Reviews.io, five stars. It's the same everywhere you look. So if you want something that actually works, sign up for today's free quit drinking webinar. Book your place and you'll even get a copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a free gift just for turning up. Remember, the best time to have quit drinking was 10 years ago. The next best time is right now.